what is up everyone yes i know it's been a while i'm not even gonna really mention it next time i upload it's just gonna be whenever when i upload i just been insanely busy it's honestly a good problem to have because i've been getting a gig almost every week so far i know after january it's just gonna like die right off actually more after december because no one's having holiday parties or birthday parties it's the winter everyone hates it here in new england so it's it's, it's it's not gonna last for too long but yeah this is very very busy season i've had one of the most stressful weeks i actually had to go and buy a brand new car two days ago this is the first car i've ever financed and that was a whole thing i had to get used to and find out because my first two cars bought them outright and I basically drove my second car into the ground because I had to drive my house to work and then drive three hours out to Connecticut to perform for someone's birthday party. There's a couple of losses waiting to happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but where do you think it is? In my in my pen, in my in my short pocket. <laughs> no, not exactly. Okay. Um, no, but God, it's in my no, hand. See, you jacket. Un, 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 underneath this dish. No, no, no. You think it's holding that match? Yeah, I've been holding it. Oh, you didn't touch this. Should I open it? Go over there. Yeah, you're gonna bug me out, bro. I'm telling you. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't. Fucking don't, dude. He's fucking evil. Look at him. Listen, dude. you make my wife turn into Drew Barrymore. <laughs> drive three hours back, and then the next day drive two hours to uh, Nashua, New Hampshire, for a different birthday party or like a baby shower, and then drive like two and a half hours back. It's just, man, it's. I, I, I've done a lot of driving in the last few months and I put a lot of miles on my car. And also another update, Eric July's book. I have not read any of it. I've probably read like two pages, but I got, I, I got a little too high and I couldn't focus. I've read the same like four panels, like eight times. Couldn't understand what was going on. So I put it down and I, when I was in a better mind, I told myself I was going to read it. I want to talk about something I have had a problem with for years years upon years probably my entire life but yes most of you guys know that i am from boston i was born in boston and i, I just hate that place with the burning passion deep into my heart i just can't stand being in that place i honestly bought a gun just to go out to that area so i could perform at certain functions so yes if you ever see me in the city 99.100% of the time I am strapped because I I'm just so uncomfortable there. It's just Boston, man. Boston and also Providence to an extent. It's just I just don't like them. Yeah, so the the traffic is one thing. I'm much closer to Providence than I am to Boston. I'm about like 45 from like Boston, about like a half hour to Providence. The traffic to get there, it's so mind bogglingly just it's just terrible it's horrible you have to drive it, it would tell you like on the gps it could be like a 45 minute drive depending on how deep into boston you're going that 45 minute cruise could turn into like a good hour and a half if you leave at the wrong time because you could leave at four o'clock which is around like when everyone's getting out of work and school and picking up their kids that's gonna take forever I honestly would much rather take like a three hour drive out to Connecticut than an hour and a half drive into Boston because the drivers there are the worst. I honestly think that Massachusetts or Boston are, is like one of the worst drivers in the country. And I do remember taking my driving test. I didn't get to take it until I was 19 because I got a job and I paid for all the classes and the uh, lessons and everything. It was literally just like drive down here, reverse here, parallel park. Okay, here, you'll get your license in the mail by Monday. That was literally my test. I swear it was just that was just it. And they also <laughs> let you sit in the back seat while the two kids ahead of you get to do it. And you basically watch them do the test so you're basically just watching the exact same test twice in a row until you take it and it's, it's it's very very easy and simple but like the test is so easy it's probably why we have the worst drivers and i honestly i can't stand looking at tall glass high rises i feel like i'm some type of animal in a cage it, it feels so weird i just don't like that steel glass concrete look it just it feels so cyberpunk dystopian 
every time I'm out <laughs> in any type of city that kind of looks like that. Sometimes I like I like Texas and Dallas, like they look much nicer because I think it's spread out. With Boston and like New York, everything's so crammed together and just on top of it, on on top of each other. I just I can't I do not like that feeling. People that live in like massive multiplexes houses where there's like 50 people that live in one building. Oh man, I could I could not do it. Now, for years, I've always had a problem going there because of traffic and just the way how it looks is always dirty. Uh, people there are usually always upset. Uh, but I do I'll, I do appreciate getting gigs there. I don't want this to be like, oh, hey, like I hate taking gigs in Boston. I do appreciate it. 99% of the time, people are super, super nice. They really, they pay really well too because it's the city. But the one thing I do notice is that the the people from city areas are totally different from people from rural rural areas. The rural rural people are way more. I don't know if I could say that word correctly. Rural 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 rural, <laughs> rural. people from the rural areas are much much nicer than the people from the city. And what I mean from that is the rural areas are a lot more inviting city people are way more standoffish and that's basically like everything you see you see that in the movie whenever it's in new york they're very aggressive assholes like every single time or even but it's any city uh portrayal people are very aggressive ah, some kind of freaky lewis something well, i could do he stinks and i don't like him Attention, whoever you are, this channel is reserved for emergency calls only. No fucking shit, lady! Do I sound like I'm ordering a pizza? But when I'm performing, it's like a miasma of just distrust among everybody. And what I mean about that is when I go up and I perform, I would start off basically every single time saying, Hey, hi, my name's Sergio Purcell. I'm a magician. I was hired to entertain you guys. Would you guys like to see anything? I try to be more approachable, try to be nice and be calm. <laughs> the reaction from the people from the city areas versus the rural city people, it's about like a 60, 40 split. 60% of the time, these people jump back and they have their guard up <laughs> immediately and you could feel it like the people like stand back and they immediately you could see on their face is who the fuck is this guy every single time even if i explain the entire thing they they just have this befuddled confused look the thing about the city is that they're very standoffish and they will question you the entire way through and they always have the worst intent at the front of their minds. And I kind of understand because the city sucks. It's violent. Also, I'm pretty sure Boston was one of the defund the police areas, which you get what you deserve. I honestly don't care. You voted for it. I don't live there. That's your problem. And I think what the reason is that when you go far out, like when you go far out, like in the sticks, it's more of a family event. But when you're in a city, it's way more corporate so no one really knows each other and that's probably my analysis on the entire thing people no one knows each other and that's why i hate the city it's just this unknown very i don't know if you're trying to fuck me over type attitude with everything and it's just tension the whole time you're, you're uncomfortable driving there you're uncomfortable there everything's dirty there's homeless people everywhere um political correctness runs amok all over the place i remember taking my fiance to the hospital there are just pride flags everywhere especially in providence they're all over the place blm pride flags and it, the weird thing about massachusetts if you're going to boston there's pride flags everywhere but all, nearly every surrounding town uh, there's just like fuck joe biden <laughs> flags everywhere or i did that stickers at every single gas station which is a few in my area too. <laughs> so I have a good example. I perform at a restaurant in Providence bi-monthly. The money is really, really good. The people tip really, really well. You could tell there's like some type of tech sector in that area because everyone there are super attractive or they give out a lot of money. I was tipped like a hundred bucks one time by this one dude. I actually shouldn't say that with 
Biden having almost 90,000 IRS agents. But other than that, I've had people refuse shaking my hand. And it's one of the weirdest sensations ever. When you put your hand out and they look down and acknowledge it. And they'll just completely just keep carrying on the conversation like what they did was just not weird. I don't know if it's because of COVID. Probably. And I haven't seen that before. But... I've had people actually say, oh, hey, yeah, I just don't shake hands. Actually, the guy who tipped me a hundred bucks said that he doesn't shake hands, which I, it was just really bizarre and weird. There's another time where I walked into a table and I think it was like two females and like a guy there with like a group of females. I walked up. Hi, my name is Citra Purcell. I'm a magician. I would like to perform for you guys. The woman, it was a black lady. On the left hand side of me, once I approached the table, she literally physically jumped back in her seat exactly just like that. Like I jumped out of nowhere, like I was fucking Jason or something. But I literally like came over. Like I don't interrupt. I'm like, oh, hey guys. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I, I literally like approach. Like I wait for them to stop or them to acknowledge me. I'm like, hey guys, I'm sorry to interrupt. Like I'm like, I try to be as nice and genuine as I can. But this woman was just like, she was like this the entire time I was talking. And once I got to the point of saying, hey, um, uh, would you guys like to see anything? Her two friends were like, uh, I like they were trying to get the vibe of the they, they usually try to get the other vibe of the other people to see, like, do you, do you guys want to watch this? Or like the black woman to my left just immediately went, Wait, no, 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 I'm good. No, I'm fine. No, I'm good. And I just went okay and just walked away and found somebody else and it was just <laughs> it was such a bizarre thing i don't know what it was i don't know if i look like an ex-boyfriend i it could be a myriad of things i don't think it's like hey she didn't like me how i look probably it could have been how i looked how i was dressed i kind of reminded her of someone that abused her or a, a lot uh, also a lot of people also it could have been a cultural thing I, in the area I grew up in, there's a lot of Haitian people and Haitians, they're very iffy about magic. Uh, it's either that they see it as like, oh, hey, yeah, it's a cool magic trick or it's like voodoo to them. It's just a cultural thing, but it, it was just such a weird reaction of someone just approaching you and just saying hi. Oh yeah, city people would literally act like you're just bothering them the entire time. If you ask them politely, like, hey, I'm a magician, I'm, would you like to see anything? A lot of them would just roll their eyes. They would just be like, no, I'm good. Or they just dismiss you, pretend you're not there. And it's just, I, oh man, I don't understand why people like that culture of just being a bunch of strangers being clumped into one area. But when one tries to interact with the other, it's just they're just dismissed immediately. And it, it is, it's very it's a small subsection of people of assholes that honestly do that because every single time at Providence, I have a fantastic night. One's always better than the last, always tipped really well. Not mo majority of people are there are nice. And usually what I notice, it's the group of guys always want to see magic. And sometimes the group of women want to see magic is usually like a 50 50 with them. And they get all dolled up and they, they don't. They're the, it's the group that gets all dolled up, but don't want men to talk to them or they don't like specific men talking to them. I don't know. I don't go out and I date women. Jennifer and I have been together forever, and it's just, I, I don't understand the dating scene. I don't know what it is like. You could tell a lot of women just like to sit there, drink the entire night, and just be left alone. So I could respect that, or there are people there just on a date they really want to be messed with. It's like, I understand totally, but it's just like some people are just so overly aggressive. I don't know why. It's just, <laughs> it's just some people are just dicks about it. All right, guys. Yeah, that's really it from me. Uh, I need to get on reading this book. I've had it for like the longest time. I actually have a couple minutes to myself. I actually might edit this, read a little bit of that and yeah, just call it a night. And that's my Sunday. And yeah, honestly, I honestly don't know how to end this video, dude. I'm just going to cover the camera. Just fuck it.